Oh hey, welcome back. My name is Ronald, this is my software journal. Let's just get into it. We're still working on arrays. The last two problems we're dealing with searching and inserting data with arrays. The max consecutive ones we're dealing with searching the data in our array. The duplicate zeros we're dealing with inserting the data of the array. Because I want to cover the three main operations I will be using on each data structure, today I will be covering deleting, sort of. You'll see. Let's get into the third problem of this series. Remove duplicates from sorted array. Here's the prompt. Given a sorted array noms, remove duplicates in place such that each element appears only once and returns the new length. Do not allocate extra space for another array. You must do this by modifying the input array in place with O of 1 extra memory. Clarification, confuse why the return value is an integer, but your answer is an array. Note that the input array is passed in by a reference, which means a modification to the input array will be known to the caller as well. Internally, you can think of this. So nonce is the input array, and it's gonna go into your function, remove duplicates. It's gonna just return the length of the array without the duplicates. So as we're going through, it's gonna loop through that array and it's just gonna reach to that point where there's no duplicates in that array. And that's what it's gonna be outputting. All right, so let's get to the example for this right here. So the first example, we have one, one, two, and output should be two because we only want one and two. So the new nonce will be one, two. Your function should return length two, with your first two elements of nonce being one, two, respectively. It doesn't matter what you leave behind beyond the length of the array. All right, so that's one. Let's get into two. All right, so for the input, we get zero, zero, one, 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 two, two, three, three, four. We got zero duplicates, we have one duplicates, we have two duplicates and three duplicates. In the output array, one, zero, one, two, three, four. And of course that makes sense and everything. Here's the constraint. The length of your array could be between zero and 30,000. And the values of your array could be between negative 10,000 to 10,000. The values is sorted in ascending order. So that's gonna be pretty important because every single step has to be assorted. So it has to be in that order of zero, one, two, three. So all the duplicates will be next to each other. Let's get into the first approach of this problem. First step for this problem, we need to handle the constraint in which the norm length is zero. And for the most part, there will be no duplicates and the length of the array is zero because there's no, there's no values in the array. So let's handle that. We're gonna create a variable called len, short for length. And then we're gonna do noms.length. Then we're gonna do an if statement right here where the length is equal to zero and we wanna return zero. All right, so let's get into the second step of this problem. Now we need to iterate over this array to find the specific duplicates. We gotta do this in a very specific way. In particular, what we need to do is at the beginning compared to the next value. And that's where we wanna decide how we should do that. In order to achieve the logic that we need to achieve, we need to use a technique called two-pointer technique. So first off, we're gonna need another index to specify in the array where we at. So we're gonna say this is the index in which we are overriding. So let's do a, at the very beginning, int index equals zero. So this index, you can think of it as the stationary index. So it's gonna do some work there while it's working there, stationary. And then it's gonna be put into another space in order to do some more work. The next pointer that we need to specify is the runner. So this one is gonna actually be using to run to get some stuff done faster for, for this stationary index. All right, so the i variable in the for loop is gonna be the runner and it should be one step ahead at the beginning. So thus i should be equal to one because then we have the index, the stationary at the zero and then we want it to compare it to the next value which is the runner at one. We're gonna put some text, we're gonna put some logic in the for loop to specify that. So we have int i equals one. Then we also wanna loop through the whole entire for loop as well. So we're gonna do i is less than len. 
and then we're going to increment that all right so since the index is at the beginning of the array and i is right after the index we need to make a way to compare those values so we're going to write an if statement saying this if the noms i values are not equal to noms index values then overwrite the array at the index for the fourth step so this is where we're going to overwrite the array so first we don't want to overwrite at the very beginning of course so we want to actually overwrite right after at the very beginning so we want to increment first before we overwrite so in order to do that we do an index plus plus and that's going to increment it by one before we overwrite then we're going to need to overwrite that value at the i value so we're going to do a noms index equals to noms i values and that should be it for that particular step all right so for the last part of this problem we need to return the length of the array without the duplicates because at this point we've been indexing the stationary one by one when we find unique values we need to pretty much return that index and we know that the index plus one is actually equal to length so we're going to return the index here plus one to get the length of the array so when it goes into that internal function and our function gets called then it's going to print out only the unique values not the other values at the end of the array and that should be it so before we submit this of course we got to get some b-roll in there so run the b-roll So the time complexity of this particular code is O of N, where N is actually equal to the number of elements inside the array. The reason behind that is because we, at the most, we will have to loop through every single element of the array. And it's really um, N minus one. But if you can think of it like this, N could be infinity, and then that negative one will be insignificant. So the space complexity is O of one. And the reason behind that is because we're just using the in place array. And anytime we're doing in place array, we're not allocating any additional information. That should be pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I have more on the series coming up and hopefully you're gonna see some new and improved uh, programming skills from me for the next couple or problems that I'll be showing to you guys. And I think the next one I will be looking into is recursion, because those are the problems I've been working on lately. And so I'm gonna show you guys that pretty soon. So make sure you subscribe to have that notification when those videos drop. And then until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.